Good morning, dear students. Today we will discuss about OpenF domain. In this session, I will speak on an OpenF domain where we will discuss about definition, historical background, pathophysiology, and we will also discuss about the different indication and complication of OpenF domain. And in last, we will discuss about temporary abdominal closure device issue and other supportive management and finally we will complete with the definitive closure technique for this open abdomen before starting the real topic open abdomen uh, i will start with one case scenario uh, the case scenario is a 37 year old female came to our emergency department with complaint of chest pain dyspnea and with history of exploratory laparotomy and CCT chest showed a central bilateral pulmonary wall is probably because of deep and thrombosis, and she had also low urine output. Although abdomen was closed very well, but it was distended too much. On evaluation, the intra-abdominal pressure was found placed. So, how will you approach this patient? So, this uh, case history is somehow related to uh, a condition where the raised intra-abdominal pressure is concerned and and we should know that whenever you are thinking that the patient's intra-abdominal pressure is raised, our next step to open the abdomen in view to avoid abdominal compartment syndrome that we will discuss later. Second case scenario is after road traffic accident, a 45 years old male with a body mass index more than 38 kilogram per meter square came to emergency department. On arrival, patient was evaluated and finally diagnosed with a major vascular injury and liver laceration. On exploration, bleeding was so severe it was very difficult to find the source of bleeding. And finally, it was secured by packing with the surgical towel. The surgeon was feeling very difficulty in closing the abdomen. What's your comments? I mean, would you like to close uh, by any other method? Because surgeon is feeling very difficulty to close the abdomen. I think whenever you are thinking that the closing is very difficult, please keep the abdomen open again in view to avoid the development of abdominal compartment syndrome. Okay, so these are the things open abdomen, abdominal compartment syndrome, intra-abdominal hypertension, what are the effect of open abdomen and how to close the open abdomen after application of temporary abdominal closure device. So these are the things that we will discuss in today's class. You must have seen a naturally open abdomen like this and accidentally open abdomen, especially after a major trauma like this. Yes, for postmortem purpose, abdomen is being open like this by such type of incision. But the exact definition of open abdomen is when the facial edge of abdomen remain unapproximated intensely like this is considered as an open abdomen and concept of this open abdomen was not in practice in ancient time and priority was always to close the abdomen and in fact if abdomen was open for any reason it was considered as an anathema first time the management of open abdomen was introduced by Oakleaf in 1940 since then it had been debated and after 40 years Stenberg and Duff started to manage open abdomen with the application of gauge pack on the Mishra. Surgeon of Belgium in 1983 adopted planned relapse at every two to three days and found good result. He decreased the mortality from 73 to 37%. Heidrich et al. described the use of Marlex mesh with the chipper. And then Garcia Sabrito used a stentrite chipper technique. But in reality, open abdomen was stemmed from the concept of the damage control surgery that was introduced by Rotando in year 1993. So this open abdomen is whether a treatment or a problem. All of us knowing this open abdomen term, not because of problem, but because of treatment. Yes, 
Open abdomen is very, very useful intervention after damage control surgery in a trauma patient. And in some surgical conditions like septic beta stroke, pancreatitis, and vascular cases to prevent as well as to treat abdominal compartment syndrome. But open abdomen by itself is a morbid and major challenging issue. So what should be the next approach after opening the abdomen? A multidisciplinary approach with a strong interaction among surgeon, ICU team, plastic surgeon, nursing staff, dietitian, psychologist, and other health professional required in order to offer the best treatment care to this critically ill patient of open abdomen. And to learn its pathophysiology, first of all, we will have to learn about intra-abdominal pressure, intra-abdominal hypertension, abdominal compartment syndrome, and effect of open abdomen over abdominal compartment syndrome. A normal intra-abdominal pressure is 5 to 7 mmHg in a critically ill adult, but if this intra-abdominal pressure will be more than 12 mmHg and sustained in nature, this is called as intra-abdominal hypertension, which may be further divided into 4 kg depending upon its value like 12 to 15 mmHg, grade 1 intra-abdominal hypertension, 60 to 20 mmHg, intra-abdominal hypertension grade 2 is considered, and 21 to 25 mmHg intra-abdominal hypertension grade third is considered and if the intra-abdominal pressure will be more than 25 mmHg this is called intra-abdominal hypertension grade four but if the sustained intra-abdominal pressure will be more than 20 mmHg with or without an abdominal perfusion pressure less than 60 mmHg which is associated with new organ dysfunction or failure then the condition is called abdominal compartment syndrome. And if the cause of this abdominal compartment syndrome will be present in abdominal pelvic cavity, this is called primary abdominal compartment syndrome, otherwise called secondary abdominal compartment syndrome. And please, you should also know how to calculate the abdominal perfusion pressure. Abdominal perfusion pressure can be calculated by calculating mean arterial pressure and intra-abdominal pressure and it should be more than 60 mmHg. Predisposing factor to develop this abdominal compartment syndrome may be intra-abdominal infection or trauma. In case of intra-abdominal infection, there is a considerable accumulation of inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, 6 and 10 around the infected area which leads to the development of systemic inflammatory response syndrome. And these serial responses cause a microvascular dysfunction, massive visceral edema, and development of intra-abdominal hypertension as well as abdominal compartment syndrome. And in case of trauma, especially after damage control surgery, because of inadequate packing or fluid overload also leads to the development of abdominal compartment syndrome. Whatever the cause of abdominal compartment syndrome, it could be infection or trauma. But this raised intra-abdominal pressure causes significantly decreased in abdominal blood perfusion that leads to an aerobic metabolism and acidosis. This acidosis causes release of free radicals, which is responsible for capillary leak syndrome. And this capillary leak syndrome further increases the intra-abdominal pressure as well as damaging the mucous barrier and once the mucous barrier of gut get destructed there will be bacterial translocation and acidosis and this vicious cycle subsequently leads to the development of multi-organ dysfunction syndrome and multi-organ failure therefore a prompt open abdomen must be considered to achieve source control and intra-abdominal decompression to prevent abdominal compartment syndrome Now come to see the effect of open abdomen to overcome abdominal compartment syndrome. Immediately after opening the abdomen, there will be rapid decline in intra-abdominal pressure up to 50 to 75 percent. And also there will be temporarily normalization of physiological hemostasis like fluid and electrolyte balance. And after uh, 48 hours, momentum and boil get loosely fixed in gelatinous mass that is composed of fibrin and 
and to date by the end of week during four to five days adhesion increases significantly because polymerization of fibrin occurs and collagen later on and beyond 10 days granulation tissue and microvascular circulation are well developed with increased deposition of fibrin and collagenization and all this leads to lateral retraction of abdominal fascia. See how lateralization of fascia appears in this diagram and if this stays really it becomes very difficult to close the abdomen because both side both edge of the fascia is going in the opposite direction and situated very far away from each other. After this, it becomes very easy to learn the classification of open abdomen. Open abdomen is divided into four grades, grade 1, 2, 3, and 4. In grade 1, there is no adherence, no fixity, and no lateralization. Grade 1 is further divided into grade 1A and grade 1B on the basis of whether open abdomen is clean and contaminated. If it's a clean, it's called grade 1A, and if it's contaminated, it is called grade 1B. In grade 2, Adherence and fixity start to develop and grade 2 is also divided into grade 2a and 2b again on the same basis that whether it's a clean or contaminated and if fistula is formed it becomes grade 3 and grade 4 is frozen open abdomen with severe reticent which is almost unable to close surgically with or without fistula. Regarding indication of an open abdomen please follow the three principle number one if you are not able to close the abdomen. Number two, if you are thinking preoperatively, intraoperatively or postoperatively that you should not close the abdomen. And number three, if patient's physiology is not allowing you to close the abdomen. So these three principles will always guide you to find all the indication of open abdomen that we will discuss later on. So, indication for open abdomen is of course damage control surgery, especially if patient having penetrating trauma or extensive abdominal wall defect and if patient's hemodynamic condition is not stable even at the end of primary survey and if operative time is longer, uh, preferably more than 90 minutes or if patient trapped inside the trial of trauma death like hypothermia, acidosis and coagulopathy and if patient having life-threatening extra abdominal injury. And patient having complex and major vascular injury like this, or having a solid organ injury like grade uh, four or five. And apart from trauma, if there is evidence of sepsis, and source control is unsatisfied and patient is immunocompromised with a very low CD4 count or having severe necrotizing fasciitis of abdominal wall or patient is suffering from severe acute pancreatitis. Please, in all these situations, you must plan for open abdomen to prevent abdominal compartment syndrome. And for a second look operation, when the first operation was stopped for physiological exhaustion of the patient, for remote area bleeding that was not amenable to surgical correction or visceral injury with risk of bowel ischemia and for removal of back for solid organ injury. Now see what are the different challenges and complications that may occur after open abdomen. As bowel is exposed to air, so exposed gut are more vulnerable to get bacterial infection. And this bacterial overloaded gut along with minor trauma that usually occur during dressing of the open abdomen may cause perforation and intra-atmospheric fistula, which is the most dangerous and devastating complication of an open abdomen. Along with bowel, blood supply of bowel is also exposed to air and exposed to bacteria. And these blood vessels may get torn out during dressing of the open abdomen and patient may bleed pro 
profusely in the presence of other predisposing factors like hypothermia, acidosis, hypotension, dilution of the blood volume. And in this situation, patient may go in shock. So apart from intra-atmospheric fistula and bleeding, patient may also have post-operative ileus because of massive electrolyte imbalance and post-operative adhesion. And please don't forget to diagnose and treat other complications like deep band thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, skin and soft tissue infection, ARDS, and urinary tract infection. Because these complications are very, very common in a patient of open abdomen and there is a delayed facial closure, so there is a more chance to have abdominal wall hernia also. And all these complications may lead to the development of sepsis, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, and multi-organ failure in a patient of open abdomen. So whenever you are thinking that there is indication of open abdomen and you are not giving incision, patient will die 100%. So please, you must give incision whenever you are thinking that there is indication of open abdomen. Yes, complication will occur after opening the abdomen, but be ready and be prepared yourself to prevent and treat such complication and challenges that may occur after open abdomen because the life of this person is just one major incision after another. Regarding management, there are three basic sequential steps to manage open abdomen. First is timely laparostomy, followed by temporary abdominal closure procedure, and finally, definitive abdominal closure technique. There are so many temporary abdominal closure devices mentioned in literature like skin approximation only, Bagota pad, negative pressure wound therapy, Whitman patch, Abthera, and Abra system. But one ideal temporary abdominal closure device should have all these features like it should be easy to apply and it should be easy to remove so that it provides rapid and easy re-entry into abdominal cavity. It should provide protection from external contamination and injury so that we can prevent the development of intra-atmospheric fistula. It should prevent adhesion and promote medial detection of fascia so that primary closure become easy. And it should be able to prevent intra-abdominal hypertension. And it should also drain the curate and contamination properly without causing much fluid loss and allow easy nursing care. And the last but not the least, it must be easily available, inexpensive, and cost effective, especially in a developing country like India. A skin approximation only is the simplest and most inexpensive way of temporary abdominal closure device, but this method is not much popular because this is not ideal to prevent abdominal compartment syndrome and its use is limited, especially if there is loss of abdominal torment or if there is severe necrotizing fasciitis of abdominal wall. After this, Bogota bag became known worldwide in 1984 after using this technique first time by Oswaldo Borges in Colombia. Although use of Bogota bag was very easy and low cost method, but associated with high mortality, morbidity, as well as low rate of primary facial closure and because of this limitation its use not become much popular after 1984 when it was first time used by Oswaldo Borges in Colombia. Next is negative pressure wound therapy which is most commonly used technique. It includes vacuum pack dressing of Parker and vacuum assisted facial closure of Garner and Milder. Vacuum pack technique is working like this. For detail, see here the cross sectional view. Vacuum pack dressing consists of a three layer construction. First layer is fenestrated polyethylene sheet, which is placed directly over the gut or the viscera. Then apply moist surgical towel with a sectional drain and finally an adhesive drapes over the entire wound. 
The drain is then connected to wall suction, which provides a continuous negative pressure in the range of 100 to 150 mm Hg. And this technique is a very safe, non-expensive, controlled fluke loss and not causing injury to bowel wall. Second negative pressure wound therapy is vacuum assisted facial closure. Here also, first of all, apply a fenestrated polyethylene sheet over the bowel and under the facial edge that prevent adhesion between viscera and abdominal wall. Then apply a sponge over this sheet, which is stabilized by a running suture on the skin edge. This help in pushing the viscera down into the abdomen. Then suction tubing and occlusive dressing are applied. Once the suction will on, a sponge will shrink and start to pull the edge of the wound towards midline, which promotes the medial retraction of the wound. This sponge dressing we can change at every three to five days. So consequently, as the wound is pulled together and edema resolved, the upper and lower ends of the wound may be closed like this and finally close the fascia completely and keep the skin open which may be closed after three to four days. On comparing between these two techniques, vacuum assisted facial closure technique uses polyurethane sponge instead of toil and a special type of vacuum pump instead of simple wall suction and partial suturing is being attempted in vacuum assisted facial closure but not in vacuum pack dressing. Although vacuum assisted facial closure is costly, but facial closure rate is much, much better in BAFC as comparison to vacuum pack dressing. This vitamin patch is basically a modification of previously described Velcro adhesive C that consists of two layers of biocompatible material with hook on one side and loops on the other side. The seats are sutured to the opposite facial edge to close the abdomen. Then one seat is overlapped over the other and allow this seat to stick together. After overlapping, these seats are covered by a surgical towel or a sponge, a suction tube, and finally by an adherent plastic clips. Beauty of this patch is that after removal of a sponge, the seat can be easily pulled apart to allow for re-exploration and tighten every time to allow for gradual closure of the abdominal wall. Next is abra, that is abdominal reapproximation anchor, which is low tension primary closure technique. And first time this technique was described by Remer. This technique having four key components. Number one, elastomere for a dynamic closure. Second is elastomere anchor system to keep the elastomere in position. Third one is elastomere retainer, which prevents the displacement and dislodgement of elastomere inside the abdominal cavity. And fourth one is the perforated silicon visceral protector, which protects the bowel and this Ebra gives a good result when it combines with other technique like vacuum pack dressing or vacuum assisted facial closure technique. Such complication may be expected after Ebra like this. A systematic review of Peter Baldwin hands broke on the basis of facial closure and mortality rate demonstrated that Whitman patch and vacuum assisted facial closure are best temporary abdominal closure technique followed by APRA and vacuum assisted dressing. And after going through Plyco's comparative study, we can say that combined technique is really best than any one technique because if you will see the result, the primary facial closure rate is always higher, almost around 93.3% as compared to any single technique, 
So please follow the combined technique as a temporary abdominal closure device as per Blackwood study. If your patient of an open abdomen is in intensive care unit, please must spread the triad of trauma day and start action duration protocol with massive transfusion in polytrauma patient and give fluid in a restricted way to prevent acute lung injury and ARDS. And maintain the fluid and electrolyte balance and give adequate analgesia, sedation and antibiotic coverage and also take care of a spine and back to prevent bed sore because such type of the complication is very very common in a patient with open abdomen and also get a consultation from psychiatrist to sort out all TGs who like anxiety, stress and depression because these are also very common in a patient of open abdomen who is admitted in intensive care unit. According to a star code, if patient of an open abdomen is on ventilator, the risk of intra-abdominal pressure will be very low if you will follow some basic step like if you will keep the PEEP less than 10 cm as to and if you will keep the ratio of PAO2 and FIO2 more than 300 and tidal volume on the lower side. Definitely the result will be good for a patient of open abdomen who is mechanically ventilated in ICU by following all these measures. Regarding management of intra-atmospheric fistula, when syslog recommendation is to manage this fistula under three headings. Number one, first, isolate the fistula. Second, apply vac dressing after test. And number three, plan for resection with primary anastomosis after three to 12 months. So for definitive closure for open abdomen patient with temporary abdominal closure device, our primary goal should be to close the abdomen within eight days because if closure is done after eight days, there is increased chance of morbidity, mortality, as well as other complications. An international consensus conference 2016 on open abdomen also concluded that open abdomen and negative pressure on the therapy of course improve the care of trauma patient but closure must be achieved earlier to avoid expected complication yes if there is persistent infection history of massive transfusion non-facial traction technique for tac and if the presence of early complication we should postpone the closure and in this situation, we can plan for delayed and definitive facial closure at 6 to 12 months after an open abdomen. So, summary is open abdomen is one of the greatest surgical advances in recent decades, which is mainly indicated for intra abdominal infection or damage control surgery to treat and prevent infection as well as abdominal compartment syndrome. After opening the abdomen, negative pressure on the therapy and treatment patch are the best temporary abdominal closure technique as these technique having highest facial closure rate and lower morbidity and mortality. Our primary goal, our primary target always should be to close the abdomen earlier, preferably before eight days in view to prevent other complication. And in adverse situation, we can plan for delayed facial closure maybe 6 to 12 months after open abdomen. So I do some exercise uh, on, on, on the completion of the open abdomen topic. So anyone please uh, uh, response on this question. All are indication of open abdomen except number one, second look operation in the abdominal injuries, post injury septic abdomen, injury with partial or entire loss of the abdominal wall, urinary bladder injury. So answer should be, so it's a very easy answer is urinary bladder injury. In urinary bladder injuries, open abdomen is not indicated. On the other hand, all 
cause these three second low compression, post injury septic abdomen, and injury with partial or entire loss of the abdominal wall are indication for open abdomen. Right? Can anyone explain what the full form of WCACS and when this WCACS was established? Very easy. Answer is full form of WSACS is World Society Abdominal Compartment Syndrome. And the first time this World Society Abdominal Compartment Syndrome was established in year 2004. Next question is, all are causes for primary abdominal compartment syndrome except options are damage control surgery in trauma, major vascular injury like abdominal aortic aneurysm rupture, fluid overload, and fourth one is intra-abdominal sepsis. So, which one is the not included under the cause of primary abdominal compartment syndrome? We, re we, we learned that the cause for the primary abdominal compartment syndrome is confined in abdomen and in pelvis. Very easy. Of course, damage control surgery in trauma may cause the primary abdominal compartment syndrome. Similarly, abdominal erotic aneurysm rupture also uh, confined in the abdominal area, intra-abdominal sepsis, as name suggests, inside the abdomen. So, fluid overload, fluid overload as well as excessive resuscitation is the cause for the secondary abdominal compartment syndrome. So this question is also. Next question is what are the options for a surgical decompression in patient with no recent abdominal incision to reduce intra-abdominal pressure? Options are midline laparostomy, transverse laparostomy, subcutaneous linear alveolar fasciotomy, all of the above. So answer would be very easy. So all of the above are option uh, for a surgical decompression to reduce the entire abdominal. Question is damage control surgery comprises number one control of hemorrhage, number two prevention of contamination, number three protection from further injury, or number four all of the above. So answer is very easy. All of the above because the basic component an important component of a damage control surgery are control of hemorrhage prevention of contamination and protection from further injury so answer would be all of the above i think this is the last question what is not true about tep number one tep is trauma action cognition protocol number two used in damage control resuscitation number three a ratio of giving rbc ffp and platelets are 10 is to 4 is to 2. Number 4, any blood product in any ratio can be given under TEP. So, answer very easy. This any blood product in any ratio is a not answer uh, of the trauma accentuation protocol because the ratio to give in trauma accentuation protocol for RBC, FFP, and platelets. Has been recommended as a 10 is to 4 is to 2 ratio and these two options are um, correct like a trauma acceleration protocol is the full form of TEP and TEP is usually recommended in damage control resuscitation all right thank you